Well, then Steve White, Trickway 89 for Steve Arts 89, Star Trek's Electric Gatekeeper. So I just watched Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 1, Episode 9, All Those Who Wander. Now, I have, I don't know where to start with this episode, I have mixed feelings, mostly disappointment and frustration, but some positives. Um, the, the people who are writing this show seem to be better at writing drama than writing science fiction and action adventure. Um, the stories so far have not been good. They haven't really been that original. They've relied too much on existing characters like the Gorn. Um, and it's not working on that level. The characters are working. Um, they're believable, they're likable, um, they're engaging. But the stories and what they're doing with established Star Trek, you know, elements is not really working. Now this episode, um, just spoilers, um, a main character dies and I didn't see that coming and I'm not happy with it because, um, spoilers again, it's Hammer. And Hammer hasn't been in enough episodes. We've only had nine episodes out of a ten episode season. He wasn't in the first one. He wasn't in a couple of them really. So we haven't had enough time. It's not like Tasha Yar in the first season of Next Gen where we had like 24, 25 episodes to, to you know, get to know her. It was too soon. And so far as representation, they went on and on and on about how we've got a blind actor playing a blind character. And yet they get rid of him in one year. Um, and yeah, it's just too soon. Not happy with it. Um, the actor acted the scene well. It was very emotional. Um, him and Uhura had had some scenes where she, because they start off the episode where um, some of the um, officers are getting um, promotions. And of course, we have two new um, characters never seen before. So obviously, they're the characters they're establishing to kill in the episode. Um, and Uhura, who's not sure if she's going to stay on the Enterprise. And Hammer basically talks to her and gets it out of her and through to her that it's not that you don't know where you want to be, you're just afraid to put roots down because you're afraid of losing people, that if you stay in one place, people will leave you. It's easier to leave them than be left. And, you know, basically, if you allow yourself to be open, you're going to have less pain from the people that, you know, you love and leave you than, you know, you're going to have more, you know, the love and the friendship, you know, than, you know, the loss. So you just need to just accept that's life, otherwise you're going to miss out on the good side if you're always running. So he gets that across to her fairly early on, but um, when he's dying, one of the last things he does is say to Uhura, you know, you need, this is what you need to do. So that's all very moving and that works, but the overall story, I mean, when I first saw the trailer, I thought they are going to rip off Alien, but I thought they were just going to do it in tone um, and setting and style, you know, like, I didn't think they would rip it off so literally that they literally turned the Gorn into like a Xenogorn. It's like a Xenomorph now. Basically, um, it doesn't stick an egg down your throat, but it sprays um, a, a liquid on you, which they thought was venom at first, and it infects you, and then you have creatures burst out of you, just like the chest burst. So they even look the same, except in, they're less serpent-like and more, you know, just a body and legs. But they have that same sort of colour and the mouth, and they look very similar. So... Okay, so after this scene where um, they are, the, the, the red shirts basically are getting the promotions, they get like a distress call where a ship is basically, I don't know, I can't remember if they went missing or if they actually knew it was like crashed on the planet. But um, they go down to investigate that. Now, the Enterprise has to continue on because they have to get some energy packs or cells or something or, or some sort of... Um, something to K7 because they're having technical problems and you know they have to get there otherwise they're going to lose life support. So they leave two shuttles to go down to the surface of the planet which is very much like the planet Alien which Hammer of course likes initially because it's a lot more like um, um, Andoria um, because it's like an ice planet and there are a few little nice little moments with Spock and the other crew and that like there's a drinking game um, where he calls the lieutenant Ensign accidentally, so when you do that you have to have a drink or something. So there's little things like that, and Spock is still sort of dealing with being human. And there's a moment where, because um, they, they immediately find that the crew has been killed, and um, quite messily, 
there's blood everywhere and um, the crew, some crew are outside and they've been killed, so they're not quite sure what's happened. They get into the logs, they found out that three people were found stranded and rescued and one of them was infected with gorn eggs because unlike the original um, gorn um, that um, hatched, had eggs that actually hatched, these ones basically impregnate you and they burst out of you like the chest buster in Alien because now they're the Xenogorn. Um, not happy with that. I mean, if you, if you don't like the original series Aliens and lore, then just avoid it. Write a new character, write a new species, and then you can write them any way you want. They can do anything you want. You can be as creative as you want. You can rip off anything you want. But just leave the original characters alone. Don't bring them on just to change them so much they're unrecognisable. Um, so, not happy with the Xenogorn. Um, I, it's like what they did with the Klingons. They just brought them on in name only to change them so much. They may as well just create a whole new species. And then they could have just gone as far as they wanted with that and not bothered anyone so far as canon and established um, you know, aliens that we are attached to or feel like we already know. And familiar with. So I don't know why they didn't just create a new species that they encounter on the planet they've never encountered before. Strange new worlds. No, they just bring up the Gorn again who have never never seen before but yet the crew's seen them but yet they just somehow forget by the original series Star Trek Arena episode. Um, so yeah. They find the kid who's just like new to course and then she's though accompanied by an alien who can't speak and they can't translate it. There's a nice moment with Uhura where she sort of communicates with him without actually working out his language. Um, but he's sick, and you kind of know immediately that he's going to have a chest-bursting experience, which he does. And, of course, the first of the two um, officers to get the promotion is killed, and the second one's killed in a hall, and Spock sees that, and he's a bit traumatised by that, but he's not sure how to process his emotions. And Samuel and he does observe that the creature was very fascinating, and, of course, Samuel Kirk has a go at him, much like McCoy did in the Gallo 7, but I'm a bit more aggressive and seems a bit more out of place and a bit um, irrational. Pike shuts it down once he calls him pointy-eared, but um, it does seem out of place. And later in the episode where Spock has to challenge one of the Gorn because there's four baby Gorn, one kills the other, the other three are out there, eventually another one kills another and they're down to two. Um, they kill one, and then they're down to just hunting the one. And at one point, Spock has to take it on, and he basically has to find the rage that he felt, or the anger that he felt of seeing his friend or um, workmate killed, and he basically charges at it and runs at it, and he's screaming. And he has once he sort of lets his emotions out and gets in touch with them, he's having trouble managing them. And Christine tries to help him with that. She sort of observes that right away. But um, basically... They set up a scheme where Hammer, who has actually gotten close enough to the alien that he's been sprayed with some venom, um, he is going to be bait, and so is um, Lan, and they basically freeze the ship because the Gorn don't like the cold, and draw them to one space with heat, and then they trap them in an area, they get in, they use themselves as bait, and they get in these escape pods or whatever, and seal themselves off, and then spray this little place with a bunch of... Um, freezing gases. So they freeze the little the little Gorn that is running around before that along, along the walls like the um, the half-dog alien chestburster in Alien 3. So it's a lot like Alien 3 in some ways. Um, and it gets frozen like this, like standing on the ground like that. It looks a little ridiculous and Lan smashes it with her um, phaser rifle and it's all, all yellow inside. Um, so yeah. Then we see that Hammer is really sick and, and of course we realise that he's been impregnated and instead of allowing himself to be frozen, put into stasis, operated on to remove the aliens, um, he decides it's his time to go and he feels like he's fixed everything. He, he feels like he fixed Uhura and she feels like she's fixed him. She, um, he's fixed her. And he basically walks out the back of the ship, um, walks out of the force field and jumps off the back of the ship out of the, um, the cargo bay. Um, and that's the end. I mean, it was played well emotionally. The actor was good. I'm upset that they killed him. It was premature. They didn't need to do it. Um, I feel like the character had a lot more to do, and I would have seen, would have liked to have seen a lot more of him. 
But um, yeah, I, I just feel like the people writing the show are better with drama, are better with characters, not so much with stories, because they just keep copying stuff or recycling the old stuff and changing it. So they just make things worse. Like seriously, just create new aliens, create new species, create new stories that you can do anything with, that doesn't violate canon, that doesn't ruin characters and aliens that are already established. And just give us strange new worlds. Don't recycle the old stuff and change it. it just, it's just frustrating. Um, I mean, they just ripped off Alien and turned the Gorn into the Xenogorn. Um, and it, it didn't work. And if they just made it a new species, I think it could have been a great episode. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, I did enjoy parts of it, but overall more problems than positives.